Hello everyone and welcome to this uh, ASET training program. In this uh, session we will be uh, looking at uh, some of the key mechanisms of summarizing the data. And uh, so as such the summarizations can be done either in the form of uh, tables so any summary which we are uh, doing on a data we would be doing either in the form of tables or in the form of diagrams so we'll typically uh, look at uh, both these mechanisms if I am doing it in the form of tables, what are the tools that are available with me? If I am doing it in the form of uh, diagrams, what are the tools that are available with me? So to start off, when I am looking at the tables, the first tool that is generally available for everyone is what we call as frequency distribution. Frequency distribution is one of the powerful mechanisms if I am looking at summarizing the data in the form of tables. And uh, what does it mean? It's a simple counting of the number of occurrences of each of the values. For example, I am taking a small data set. Let's say this is a data set containing some 20 different numbers. Let's say this is about uh, the mark scored by a person out of 15, a uh, mark scored by 20 different students out of 15 in one slip test. So if I summarize it in such a way that for each set of marks, how many are there? How many, the statistical word for how many is frequency. So if I say, how many got 10? How many got 11? How many 12, 13, 14 and 15? If I can make a table which talks about the number of occurrences of each of the values I call that as a frequency distribution. So in this case, how many got 10? I have 1, 2 and 3. There are 3 people who got 10, so I would be writing 3 corresponding to it. Then what about 11? 1, 2, only 2 people got 11 in this group. So I'll write 2 here. Then how about 12? 1, then 2, 3, 4, and 5. 5 people got 12. 13, 1, 2, 3 got 13. And what about 14? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 got 14 and the remaining 15, 1, 2, only 2 got 15. Now let's try to add up, calling it as total. This total should definitely be equal to the total number of uh, students. So 3 plus 2, 5, 10. 13, 18 and 20. So the total numbers are 20 here. So this particular table where we are talking of different values which have occurred along with their frequencies, along with the number of occurrences of each of these values is what we call as a frequency distribution. So this type of Table is what we are calling as frequency distribution. And now, so for example, in here there are only six different possibilities 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 
very simple discrete data and only five six possibilities are there so tabulating the data in this format looks much easier whereas assume a scenario where all different values are possible good number of uh, finite values are possible look at this data which i am placing there are 25 people in our uh, in this exam again i am trying to denote how much they have scored out of 30 in one exam there are 25 students in a class how much did they score out of 30 is what has been tabulated but this time you see there are not just six possible values we are seeing so many possibilities here so if i start making a frequency distribution like this okay eight how many are there nine how many are there ten how many are there it becomes a big table because right from eight i have values even up to 27 so there are so many possibilities and my table looks pretty pretty long so it is in this scenario especially when i have different number of possibilities even though it's a discrete data but if i have good number of uh, outputs coming out it's better to group them and then prepare a frequency table this particular grouping of the data to form a table is what we call as grouped frequency distribution there's not the main difference between a regular frequency distribution and a grouped frequency distribution is in case of a grouped frequency distribution instead of uh, treating one number at a time we take a range at a time and try to fit in the frequencies within that range so here i would call groups like this okay 5 to 9 is a group 5 to 9 is a group 10 to 14 is another group then 15 to 19 is another group 20 to 24 and i'll take 25 to 29 so i'm calling these as five different groups these groups are also called as classes in statistical terminology and then if i find the frequency for each of these groups okay how many are there between 5 to 9 one way is it would be better if i sort this entire data right we have to do it manually in a ascend from ascending order to descending order i'll take the advantage of this tool to do it but yeah anyhow from an exam standpoint you have to do this activity manually yes this will make my things very simple so from that standpoint i'm doing it i want to find out how many are there from 5 to 9 because this is a discrete data 9.5 and all are not possible so that is where i'm saying 5 to 9 means there is only one value so i'll write here as 1 then how about 10 to 14 1 2 3 4 are there between 10 and 14 so i'll write the frequency as 4 here 15 to 19 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 are there in between 15 to 19 so i'll write this as 10 here then 20 to 24 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 are there between 20 to 24 and there are two between 25 to 29 so in this case the total again comes out to 1 plus 4 15 5 plus 10 15 23 25 so the total is again equal to the total number of participants in the data so 
this kind of a distribution where I am looking at groups is what we call as a grouped frequency distribution. The only difference between a regular frequency distribution and a group is here instead of having individual values, we'll have groups of data. We'll have the grouping of the data because quite a good number of values are coming out and the frequency of each of the values may not be more than a very small value, two or three. So there is no point in representing uh, so many values in our table. So that's where we resort to the mechanism of grouped frequency distribution. And this concept of grouped frequency distribution will be applicable both to discrete as well as continuous data also. Because if the data is continuous also, I can prepare my classes accordingly. Now let's look at an example to see how I can apply the same frequ group frequency distribution concept to a continuous data. Let's look at uh, this example now. Yeah, here we are seeing values not just uh, discrete integers, but we are seeing so many values even between 10 and 11, 9 and 10. This is what we are classifying as a continuous data. But the summarizing of the continuous data also happens in a similar manner only. So for this, how do I look at this? So here again I will call them as classes and frequency. This mechanism remains the same. What is the minimum value for me here? Yeah, in this data 7.05 looks the minimum. So what I can do is, I will say 7, 2, up to 8. Or I will call it as 7 and above up to 8, where 8 is not included. So probably in a mathematical term, value greater than or equal to 7, but less than 8. So same thing I can do, 8 I will put it into the next group. 8 and above up to 9. 9 and above up to 10. 10 and above up to 11. 11 and above up to 12. 12, anything above 12? Yeah, there is one. So let's put it 12 and above up to 13. Alright, so now when I do the frequencies, this is what I call as the grouped frequency distribution for a continuous data. Alright, let's see how it is uh, coming out. Okay, between 7 and 8, again it's better if I order the data in a ascending order so that the numbers will not be lost out. Yeah, between 7 and 8, I have two values. So, I'll put 2 here. Between 8 and 9, I have almost 5 values. So, I'll put 5. 9 and 10, we have 4. So, I'm putting 4 here. 10 and 11, we have 5. And 11 and 12, there are 2 and 12 and 13, we have 2. So the total is still 20. So even for this kind of a data, we can apply a frequency distribution, even if it is a continuous data. So that kind of a distribution, uh, uh, which is a grouped frequency distribution, is applicable both to a discrete data as well as to a continuous data. Then the third form of summarizing which we should uh, look at, which is an extension to both the frequency distributions, 
is what is called as cumulative frequency distribution. Cumulative, the way we look at the word cumulative frequency distribution is nothing but up to, right from the beginning up to that particular value. So it's like how many of them are less than or equal to 10? How many of them are less than or equal to 11? Less than or equal to 12? So up to that number is what we call as cumulative frequency distribution. In this also, how many of them are less than or equal to 9? How many of them are less than or equal to 14? How many of them are less than or equal to 19? Something like this. Up to this number, up to 14, up to 19, up to 24, this is what we call as Cumulative distribution and uh, the way we handle the cumulative frequency, this uh, cumulative frequency is up to that number. So what we simply do is for the first group, we take the frequency as it is. So for the first group, the frequency is still 3. But from the second group onwards, we add from the first group till that group, which means up to the previous group it is 3 and I will add this group, which is 2, which makes it 5. Then what about the next group? I will take the value up to the previous group, which is 5 and I will add something specific to this group, 10. Same thing here, up to the previous group, 10 plus specific to this group, taking it 13. Up to the previous group, 13 plus 5 of this group, taking it to 18. And up to the previous group, 18 plus 2 of this group, taking it to 20. Now, how do I interpret this? The way I am interpreting it is, there are 13 people who have scored less than or equal to 13. Or there are 18 people who have scored less than or equal to 14. Same logic if I apply here. If I say cumulative frequency, for the first group I will take it as it is. From the second group onwards, up to the previous group uh, total plus the frequency of this group, taking it 5, 1 plus 4. Then the next becomes 5 plus 10, 15. Then it becomes 15 plus 8, 23. And then it becomes 23 plus 2. So how do I interpret it? There are 23 people who have scored values up to 24. So this group will be called as up to 9 group. And you will not have a downward limit here. This group we call it as up to 14, this is up to 19, this is up to 24 and this is up to 29. These are the groups uh, typically in this case. So such kind of, uh, you can apply it again to a continuous as well as a discrete uh, data also. So this is uh, what is, uh, the, what are the three different modes of summarizing or Though we are talking of only two different modes, cumulative is an extension to either of the modes. These are the modes that are available for uh, summarizing the data in a tabular form. And now we have to move forward to look at uh, tabulating the same data in a diagrammatic form. Right. So I will talk about uh, summarizing the data in diagrammatic uh, form. So, some of the diagrams which we would be looking in this case, one being a bar chart, 
mostly applicable for your discrete data or a categorical data with nominal or ordinal variables or even dichotomous. So any categorical data, any categorical data or if it is a numerical data at least for a discrete data. This kind of a graph which we would be looking at is a bar chart. Then we would also be looking at a histogram which is applied only to a numerical data either discrete or continuous but heavily preferable for a continuous data only. Though I can use it for discrete but the major usage of a histogram is for a continuous data only. So we would be uh, looking at uh, how do we uh, do that, uh, how do we develop uh, this kind of uh, histograms from our data and then the next kind of charts or graphs we would be looking at is a stem and leaf plot. And uh, then a dot plot or a line plot. Then we would be looking at a frequency curves. And a box plot. These are the various... Uh, graphical representations of the data we would be looking at and what kind of interpretations we can make from this graphical representation of the data is what we would be focusing on. So when we talk about uh, a bar chart it is nothing but the frequencies of either the discrete or any other categorical data, each item being shown as a bar. For example, I'll directly plot this kind of a chart, the bar for this kind of a chart. Right? So, I'll show you how it gets, how it looks like. Yeah, this is a kind of chart which we are calling as a bar chart. What are we seeing in this chart? The x-axis contains all the different datas. Like discrete datas 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So in that place of 10, 11, 12 there could be categories also. So categories or the discrete values will be there on the x-axis and their corresponding frequencies on the y-axis. So we are seeing 10. The frequency for that 10 is 3, which is what is the number here. For 11, the frequency is 2, which is what is the number here. So, what we are seeing is the different data on the x-axis and their corresponding frequencies on the y-axis. This kind of representation is what we are calling as a bar chart. Now, this can be applied as I said both for if it is a numeric data only for discrete and if it is a categorical data, any kind of a categorical data, we can apply a, a bar chart. So, and uh, typically the 
categories or the discrete values will be on the x axis and the frequency on the y axis but the reverse also could definitely be there there is no one stopping us from showing the categories on the y axis and the frequencies on the x axis in that case uh, also we will find it uh, as a horizontal bar chart rather than a vertical bar chart but both of them are typical bar charts itself and now when i talk about a continuous when i talk about a continuous data that is where we are focusing on a histogram so which means in our example for this kind of a data i should plot a histogram and the way the histogram looks like is like this this is how a histogram is typically plotted now what is there as a part of this uh, histogram the difference between a bar and a histogram is in a bar diagram we have seen all these categories are segregated whereas in case of a histogram they are all very tightly linked which means here from 7 to 8 there are two values from 8 to 9 there are five values something like this from 9 to 10 then there are four values so i am plotting the same bars but instead of having it as a discrete value from 7 to 8 that entire thing is being shown as a frequency of 2 this is what we are calling as a part of our histogram so there are two major differences between a histogram and a bar chart if i have to look at a histogram versus a bar chart in the histogram we have no gaps whereas in the bar chart each of the items are separated by gaps and histograms are majorly applicable to continuous data whereas the bar charts are applicable majorly to a discrete data and histogram the size the height of the histogram can change and the class intervals can be of different widths this is one thing which i have to tell you classes can be of different width what do i mean by that in this example we are seeing that all the classes have more or less a similar kind of a width all the classes have a similar kind of a width 7 to 8 8 to 9 9 to 10 the width of the class is one only in all these cases but instead of that if i have, if i want to increase the width of the class i can very well do that for example the same data i'll copy it again for another graph purpose and uh, instead of saying 11 and uh, up uh, instead of saying 11 up to 12 12 and up to 13 i am clubbing let's say all of them saying 10 and up to 13 and here i want to make it 9 and then delete these two what is happening these three are having a width of 1 and this is having a width of 3 then how do i plot 
the histogram can a histogram first of all be plotted for this kind of a data the answer is yes if that is the case is this being the shape of the histogram whatever i am going to show up would that be the shape of the histogram let me just uh, show you the graph and based on that you should tell me whether that is the shape of the histogram do you think this should be the shape of the histogram okay let's see what it is from 7 to 8 the frequency is 2 fair enough from 8 to 9 the frequency is 5 from 9 to 10 the frequency is 4 from 10 to 13 the frequency is 9 so what it is uh, telling us slightly wrongly also is from 10 to 11 also the frequency is 9 from 11 to 12 also the frequency is 9 and from 12 to 13 also the frequency is 9 it gives a wrong message for us so instead of having a frequency of 9 from 10 to 13 this shear graph will tell me or for that matter any analyst it will tell them that from 10 to 11 there is a frequency of 9 from 11 to 12 there is a frequency of 9 and from 12 to 13 also there is another frequency of 9 and this is where we have to be slightly careful of whenever we are trying to plot our uh, histogram we have to be slightly careful on this aspect especially if the width of this classes is slightly different if all the width of the classes are same then we don't need to bother too much but whenever wherever we are seeing that the width of the classes is different then i need to have a small difference in the way the histogram is handled if that's the case what is the difference i need to show in the way the histogram is handled this is the way i want the histogram to be showing what we are doing in this case instead of each one of them being showing 9 all we are doing is we are making each one of them showing 3 from 10 to 11 some 3 equally distributing i know from 10 to 13 there are 9 so i can very well show that from 10 to 11 there is 9 from from there is 3 from 11 to 12 there is 3 or from 12 to 13 there is 3 or if i don't want to show it uh, like that one more mechanism is don't show 11 and 12 you only show it as okay one as 7 to 8 8 to 9 9 9 to 10 and 10 to 13 so what we are showing in this case is the x axis for the fourth element is wider but the y axis instead of 9 we are pointing it only to 3 this particular concept is what we call as frequency density in case of a histogram and the way we look at the frequency density is nothing but the frequency when we use the word frequency density it is nothing but frequency divided by class width this is one thing which we can plot for whatever is our x axis so in this case because the class width is 1 so frequency divided by the class width will be 2 by 1 2 5 by 1 5 4 by 1 4 9 by 3 because the class width is 3 in this example so the frequency will become 3 which means the height which we are plotting so the height it will change depending on the frequency as well as the width of the class interval because uh, in a histogram one thing we have to understand is the area of the histogram the area of the histogram 
represents the frequency. And frequency is uh, now nothing but the height into width. So once I know the class width, I can find out the height by dividing uh, frequency with the width. And that's how we, one more difference we can bring into our histogram. So this is uh, what uh, we will be doing even for a continuous data or for a discrete, uh, 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 mostly applicable for a continuous uh, data itself, this kind of histogram. And the next thing which we need to look at in our example is the stem and leaf plot. How do we look at this stem and leaf plot? Any data that I have, I will break it down into a stem as well as a leaf. For example, if I have the data 12, 14, 18, 23, 25. Now, what I mean by the stem and leaf is the last digit in the data. So, I will put a bifurcation with the last digit of the data. So, the elements which are to the right of the last after the separation, they are called the leaves and before the separation they are called as the stems. And what I will do is, I will write down all the stems. So, in this case 1 and 2 are our stems. I put the separation line and I write all the leaves in an ascending order joined by some space. 2, 4, 8, 3, 5. This particular diagram is what we call as a stem and leaf plot. And this, in this, the 1 and 2 which are shown here are my stems. And these are the five leaves. So the entire five data is represented in this order which will give me the stem and leaf plot. So we are arranging the data in an ascending order and after that we are doing the plotting like this. It can be done for any kind of data. Let's say I have 3.3, 3.5, 3.8, 4, 4.2, 4.6. Even in that case also, I would be uh, doing something like this itself. My stems are 3 and 4. I'll put a segregation. My leaf here is 3, 5, 8, 2 and 6. Then how can I differentiate whether this is 33 or 3.3? That is where we'll define one key. If a key says 3 slash 3 equal to 3.3, then remaining items can be, can be deduced from that scenario itself. 3 slash 5 is 3.5 and so on. So that's a one way or if I say in the same example, 3 slash 3 is 33, if I define that as a key like this, then it becomes 3 slash 5 is 35, 3 slash 8 is 38 and so on. So that's one more way in which uh, we plot the data and the advantage of this kind of a plot is we get the shape of the data. Where are more values getting concentrated? Are they getting concentrated between 3 and 4 or 4 and 5? Something like that. Where the maximum number of values are getting concentrated? Or what is the pattern in terms of the distribution of the data can very well be attained from this stem and leaf plot. So this is 
वन मोर काइंड ऑफ अ डायग्राम विच वी नीड टू बी कंफर्टेबल विथ एंड देन वी ऑल्सो हैव अ वेरी सिमिलर काइंड ऑफ अ डायग्राम विच इज कॉल्ड एज अ डॉट प्लॉट so we are calling it as dot plot and in some cases it is also called as the line plot the only difference in this case is instead of creating a stem and a leaf we will create different values as a number line and then plot their frequencies for example if i have to do the dot plot on this data itself all i am doing is i'll create a number line like this probably this is 10 11 12 13 14 and 15 and what i am doing is okay 10 has occurred three times so i would be marking three dots with equal spacing one above the other 11 has occurred two times so probably this is slightly uh, a simpler version compared to a a box uh, bar diagram itself 12 is occurring five times so i'll plot five dots and similarly 13 has occurred three times just like a number line 14 has occurred five times what we are observing is we can observe the shape of the graph just by looking at the dots 15 has occurred two times overall it is showing yes there is some kind of uh, increase in between 12 and 14 uh, some kind of pattern is being observed and this mode of representing the data is what we call as a dot plot or a line plot so this is also one more kind of a a plot we need to be uh, comfortable with and the next graph which we are looking at is a frequency curve where whereas all the graphs which we have uh, looked at till now they are plotting on the frequencies whereas this frequency curve is a plot on cumulative frequencies it's a plot of cumulative frequencies uh, rather than the actual frequencies itself now how are we looking at uh, the cumulative frequency in this case in this case two points that we need to remember is this is applicable for continuous distributions or at least grouped frequency distributions even if it is discrete it would be a very good graph for grouped frequency distributions so it could be a continuous or a discrete data but more applicable to a continuous and uh, the other point to remember is, uh, look at it as a continuous distribution itself rather than a discrete because discrete the interpretations will be slightly problematic so you can look at it as a continuous distribution applicability itself the second thing is identify the maximum value of each of the classes and plot the frequency against the maximum value so maximum values will be in the on the x axis and frequencies will be on the y axis and join all those points 
and that is what will be your typical cumulative uh, uh, frequency curve. Now let's see how do we do it on our data. So because this is a kind of uh, continuous uh, data in our example, what I would be taking is I would be transforming the data a little bit. I would be transforming the data a little bit and uh, make it like this. I will take only the highest values of each of the classes. Alright. I take the maximum values of each of the classes and then the cumulative frequencies. So, okay, if I'm going with this, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 will be my maximum values. And uh, their corresponding frequencies, cumulative frequencies are what I require. So, I'll take their cumulative frequencies. For the first one, it is only 2. Then for the second one, it is 2 plus uh, 5, making it 7 and so on. So, I am just simplifying the process. For the third one, it is 13. So, these are what are our cumulative frequencies. So, the maximum value of the group of the class and their cumulative frequencies. So, if I try to plot kind of a smooth, uh, kind of a line joining all these points, this is what I call as my cumulative frequency curve or a frequency curve. So it starts right from zero and uh, from there it uh, typically goes up but it can start from anywhere else also. Now how do I uh, look at that uh, cumulative uh, frequency kind of a curve? Okay. So this is the typical shape of a frequency curve. So I am taking on 8, 9, 10, the maximum values of each of the groups and their cumulative frequency up to that, joining all the points like this and based on the and even joining a zero. Now if I want to say a few things like uh, How many, uh, what is the, well, there are a couple of things which I can say. How many people have got less than or equal to 10? Then I can draw one graph here, one straight line from here to here and from here to here and finally say somewhere around 11 people are there who have got a total value less than or equal to 10. Or if I say, if a person got, uh, how many people or uh, what is the mark which, uh, for which less than 15% or below people are existing. So 15 or below people, 15 or uh, less number of people. So for the 15 I can plot onto this line and from here I can say, around 10.8 or something. So anything below 10.8, there are 15 people who have got, find the mark below which the 15 students are lying. So for which what I will do is I will look at the 15, I will try to point it here, from here I will drop a line onto the x-axis, somewhere around 10.8 or 10.9 is the mark around which uh, 15 students are below that particular number. So that's how I can uh, very well uh, plot these kind of uh, graphs and then uh, finally uh, say these are my uh, numbers. And this is uh, one more mechanism uh, of uh, analyzing the data where I join all the points as a smooth straight line, as a smooth line, typically sometimes it would be in a form of a S kind of a curve, a shaped kind of curve. So that will help us in analyzing the data in some of the cases. We'll be uh, using these kind of things as we move forward, but uh, from our exam standpoint, we need to have a comfort level of what each of these kind of graphs uh, typically mean and how do I interpret the data 
using each of these kind of graphs. Then, the last set of uh, graphs that we should be comfortable uh, for this, uh, as far as this chapter goes, is a box plot. And in the box plot, typically there are five elements which we look at. The Every plot will be like this. Every element, every plot will be like this. There are five points which are of importance as a part of the box plot. The five ones which I am circling, they are very important aspects. The one with a dark spot in the middle of a box is what is called as a median. We'll discuss about uh, this median slightly later. This is called as the first quartile or lower quartile. This is called as the third quartile or the upper quartile and this would be your lowest value and this would be your highest value, maximum or minimum. Now, what we are saying in this kind of a plot is, this, the whole data this is the bottom 25 percentile of the data. If uh, there are uh, 100 elements, the bottom 25 elements are lying between this and this. Then, uh, the next 25 percentage of the elements. So, from 26 to 50th in the ascending order are lying between this and this. This is also another 25% which is from 51 to 75 and from 75 to 100. So depending on the gap that is existing between the lowest to Q1, Q1 to median, median to Q3 and Q3 to max, we can very well make out how the data is distributed, whether more number of values are lying uh, between lowest to Q1 or Q1 to median, in which of the four quadrants are maximum number of data values lying. We would be uh, using these things uh, slightly uh, at a later point in time also to make our different kinds of uh, analysis. But for now, if you can understand clearly what a box plot is, how is it uh, plotted and what are the advantages of using the box plot, or what are the various components inside a box plot that will be sufficient for you uh, from, from answering various questions relating to it. Now, why are we plotting all these data? There are few important objectives of uh, plotting all these uh, graphs, data in the form of different graphs. One, I should be knowing something about the location of the data. Where is the maximum concentration of the values? Is it somewhere in the middle of the data? Is it somewhere towards the left or somewhere towards the right? Is it more concentrated towards the lower values or towards the higher values or somewhere in the middle? So that is what is some kind of an analysis about the location. I can use a stem and a leaf plot or I can use a box plot. Almost any kind of graph which we are plotting, it should be telling me what is the location, which is uh, where are the maximum values concentrated. That's one aspect which we would be uh, evaluating by looking at the data. Then I need to know the spread of the data or majority of the values concentrated in a single location are, are they completely spread out, right? It can be obtained again through various, uh, any of the plot. Is it more concentrated in the middle only or is it completely spread out? Though so the spread, the measures of the, of each of them are also there. This is typically called as dispersion or deviation. How much is your data deviating? What is the kind of fluctuation that is present in your data? This is uh, measured uh, by various uh, plots. 
and then the third parameter that is typically looked at is the skewness is the data more and more symmetrical or is more concentration of the data towards the left or towards the right so what we typically observe once we look at the data is these three key parameters we will discuss about these uh, parameters uh, again in our later chapters but just to have a quick uh, summary of this uh, chapter all we need to see is any data summary any data which we would like to summarize we can do it either in the form of tables or in the form of charts tables wise we would be looking at frequency distribution table grouped frequency distribution table or cumulative frequency distribution tables and when it comes to graphs we will be uh, generally uh, looking at a bar chart for a discrete or a categorical data a histogram for uh, 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 continuous data a stem and leaf plot again very much applicable uh, for either a discrete uh, data or a continuous data but majorly for a discrete then a line plot or a dot plot also majorly for a discrete kind of a data a box plot for any kind of a data discrete or continuous and uh, um, frequency curve majorly applicable to a continuous data so these are the different uh, graphs which we are uh, plotting and we need to have a good understanding of each of these graphs and the reason why we plot all these various graphs and charts is from that chart i want to know three key parameters of the data the location parameters which talks about the concentration of the data uh, in which area majority of the values are concentrated spread talking about the centeredness versus uh, the distribution of the data and uh, the skewness talking majorly in terms of symmetry in terms of the spread of the data or is it more biased towards the left or more biased towards the right so in summary this is what uh, is uh, the content of uh, the statistical diagrams uh, chapter for asset if you have any further queries regarding this chapter you can feel free to call me on the number that is displayed on your uh, presentation screen 9848012123 or you can visit our website www.pesgurus.com and uh, send in an email expressing your doubts and we would be very happy to clear them off i hope uh, all of you got a comfortable idea in terms of the statistical uh, diagrams thanks a lot for listening to this uh, session thank you very much